Okay, so I want to get your I want to get your thoughts on something that uh, that intrigued me earlier this week. I was facilitating a leadership panel with a group of eight wonderful leaders who were running wonderful companies, and an interesting topic seemed to take over the conversation. And uh, it was a topic of, of mental health. And I know we're not giving prescriptions here. We're not giving medical advice. We're just talking. But the issue intrigued me. And it seems to me that a lot more people are open to talking about that today than maybe in the past. So for those who think they're dealing with mental challenges, knowing that I was going to catch up with you this week, I thought I would get your perspective on it. Does that, too, start with the mind? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I think what needs to be understood is that everyone is mentally deranged. And that isn't a derogatory statement. Sure. I genuinely I genuinely mean that. Everyone everyone is, has psychopathology. People that have it to just different degrees. There's no such thing as normal. Normal is just an agreed upon normal uh, according to the greatest prevalence in society. It's a biological democracy to some degree, you know. Um, so so I, don't, I don't think that there's something called normal and then there's mental health. Um, because every human being suffers, not just mildly. Everyone suffers for their entire life. That's, that's mental illness. Mm-hmm. It isn't mental illness that, that you shouldn't suffer. The reason it's mental illness is because the mind itself is an illness. Uh, The human being lives in a constant state of anxiety, varying degrees of so-called depression. All these things don't, all these things are just terms. They're just categorizations of common phenomenon into this and that. They're all derangements. They're all um, aberrations from the natural default whether you call it anxiety or depression or um, whatever you want to call it, those are just names. Everyone is mentally disturbed in various ways. What do you think makes it so difficult for people to talk about it? But I don't, I don't, but I don't really think, I don't think there's a point of talking about it. The therapy doesn't do anything. I get it. I totally so. So why talk? So then, so then, why talk about it? The only reason, the only reason that you would talk about it is because talking about it would do something, and it doesn't. It may provide a temporary good feeling or whatever it may be, um, but it doesn't cure anything. Not even, not even close. I get it. So what's the point? So here's here's what here's the point. Assuming again that you as a leader start to recognize some of these um, at least abnormal behaviors in some of the people that you work with or some of the people that you're closely uh, uh, connected with. Uh, Do you feel it's a responsibility for a leader to bring that up? No, there's no responsibility to do anything. You're responsible for yourself. You're not, I don't even like the word leader. What does that mean? It means maybe you're in a, how about just a title? You're, you're in a, like a leader, you know, you're in a position of, of hierarchical power, perhaps in a company. And therefore, you know, you're the, I guess you're the CEO or you're the, whatever it may be. Yes. In any group. Right. So you're the, the leader. Leaders are screwed up just like the janitor. Of course. So, so it doesn't, so why should a greater, okay. If the janitor is mentally disturbed, and then the leader is mentally disturbed. Why would you place more responsibility on one of the mentally disturbed for another one? It isn't just because he is at the top of the totem pole that he's this enlightened being, right? I mean, only, only an enlightened being, a person with true wisdom, which is not a leader. I mean, only an enlightened being, a person of true wisdom, that person um, has the ability to um, guide another. But a leader by position, a leader by the size of the chair, a, and, and I don't mean in a derogatory way, I mean, a, person, a, a person who builds a company, a person who does, you know, these are not small things. So, um, 
so I don't in any way, you know, degrade that. Uh, I don't take that away from anyone because they're not small things. Um, but that just demonstrates a level of proficiency in, you know, in various talents of success and, and, and drive and motivation and building that's, that's, and that's great. Um, but to place the onus upon someone for the mental health of someone else, when everyone is suffering from top to bottom, um, it, it, it's overstating the idea of a leader. Mm-hmm. If you were in one of those positions or you were coaching somebody in one of those positions about ways to approach those issues with in an organizational wide type initiative, what would you tell them? Obviously, I know that it all starts with you taking care of your own shit, but what's beyond that? No, it doesn't start with that. It ends with that, too. Oh, so I got 50%. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like you see, you're, you're bringing the dirty laundry again and uh, that's fine. That's fine. It's, it's good to, it's it's good for, you know, people to hear this, but um, the implication once again is this conditioned implication, this conditioned behavior to teach people a bunch of stuff in the organization. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't work. You know, when they have these motivational speakers come in and they give a lot of hee hee ha ha, you know, a joke every 19 minutes, it's, it's stupid. It's juvenile. Okay. I mean, it's, it's silly that, that, that you can have a multi I know dollar, it is, man. You know, multi billion dollar company and you're wasting time and money treating, um, treating human beings like they're kids pigs in a pen and, and, saying, you know, look at this prop and look at this prop and let me tell you a nice story and all these stupid things. Human beings are not taught in a mass environment. That doesn't work. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing that works is the only thing that has a potential to work. And the thing that has a potential to work is if a human being himself decides to come forward and he presents the desire and the longing to learn. You know, you don't take people and put them in a pig pen and sprinkle a bunch of sugar on them. You know, it is so juvenile um, that, that companies do this. It is just yet another example of how human beings have no earthly idea how the human mind works. They could save themselves billions of dollars by stopping all these nonsense and workshops and meditation rooms and kumbaya classes. I mean, it's nonsense because no one is serious. If you became serious, you would seriously examine what actually works and what doesn't. You'd be interested in that. But that isn't how human beings are. They just check boxes. They just fill the, you know, they just fill the event calendar. And that, and that's not respectable. And that's why I, I don't, I'm not moved by the idea of leader because most leaders that I don't think are worthy. That isn't a leader who brings in nonsense and has their, you know, sprinkles a bunch of stuff on their people. That isn't a leader. A leader is interested in, in what is truly effective. What is, what is surgical. That means something, something that I can actually, that can actually help someone. So do you think that, that it would be effective if that person call him, her CEO, leader, evangelist, whatever you want to call him, becomes the person who really gives that permission to his or her people to seek that, you know, their own self-expression and to seek their own, you know, whatever it is, their own truth is, is, is that? No, I, I think, I think, I think, I think he'll be laughed out of the building. Because they because, won't know what the hell he's talking because, about. Right. Because, uh, because he will be coming at it. He will be saying something that is so contrary to the norm that no one's going to understand him. You see, you can't teach human beings and condition them according to X 
and then one day turn the tables and say Y and think they're going to get it. You made them into X for 50 years. Why wouldn't all they see is X? If it doesn't come in the language of X, they're not going to understand. They're not, they're not sitting there saying, I wish someone gave me Y. They're not saying that. Everyone's a walking zombie. You get up in the morning, you go over here, you do this, you check the box over here, you go over here, you have a meeting, you talk nonsense, you go home, you watch some stupid TV show, you say so, such and such to your wife or your kids, and you get up the next morning and you go do it again, right? And then and there you sprinkle some of these leadership conferences. This not, once again, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. And I'm, what I'm saying is that the human beings do not look for truth. And, and nor should they. I'm just making the statement that they don't. And because they don't, any discussion about what they do is a waste of time. Do you think that their eagerness to seek validation and approval and to be liked by their boards, by their people, by the, the people they manage and lead. Is that something that you think constantly gets in the way of them? Well, it gets in the way, it gets in the way of everybody, right? Everyone is driven, everyone is driven by ego and pleasure. But so what? What are you going to do? You know? See, the reason I always say so what is because there's nothing to teach here. Like, don't want to write anything down. Sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so the reason I say so what is... Yes, everyone is driven by that, but so what? Because as if they have a choice, right? It's the very, very rare individual that comes forward and says, well, you know, is there, I'm very interested uh, to really explore uh, because uh, I don't know any other way. And uh, this is very, very intriguing to me. Um, so, so when, like, if that happens, it, it, like a possibility is born. But other than that, it's just chit chat. Yeah. Do human beings waste their time? Yeah. But so what? Do human beings waste their lives? Yes. But so what? Do human beings have board meetings that go nowhere and waste their time? Yeah. But so what? Do human beings like enjoy validation? Yeah. But so what are you going to do? Say, don't validate yourself. Right. So all these things, it's all so what? The only, the only time it's not so what? is if a human being is find something inside him that is longing to devote himself to something. And you can't turn that your next question into a hypothetical, which says, well, what if I do find a human being who happens to, because it doesn't mean anything. The, um, those people are very rare. And so you can't just ascribe that quality flippantly. Well, that's that's why I know that you talk a lot about you talk a lot about art. You talk a lot about artists, right? And the world uses those terms very loosely nowadays. But to you, an artist is an artist like a Rembrandt, like a Picasso, who lives in their own little world and doesn't look at or or, or at that point, obviously, validation and approval wasn't part of what helped them create. Oh, but I'm sure art. it was. I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure validation and approval were a part of most artists' life. But, but I, but I think the bigger, maybe the bigger point here is that it doesn't matter what I view an artist as. Like I don't own the monopoly on what an artist is. So what? That that's what I think what an artist is. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm not recommending that someone become a true artist, right? So it doesn't matter what I think that an artist is. And person is what is a person is what he is, and he is gonna and he was that way before this podcast, and he's gonna be that after this podcast. So the attempt to change someone is a waste of time. But yeah, you, you're right. That's how I I do view an artist as someone who is pure and genuine and devoted to his art, and views his art as something that is uh, an endeavor in which he he wants to dissolve and take to the the utmost heights. Um, and and is completely almost violently uh, uh, against any uh, garnering any applause or or critical acclaim from critics. You know, uh, like that is like he views that as like petty uh, and a waste of his time. 
So absolutely. But that doesn't mean anything. So what? I could view it any way that I want. Um, it doesn't, a person who happens to be uh, moved by that and shares that, okay. And if a person who doesn't, okay. But it isn't, like, I never want the implication that because I view a, an art, a true artist to be that way, that that should in any way influence anyone. Because those things are not, because that's not true. No, nothing, you know, it isn't about changing anyone. Things are the way they are. People are the way they are. The, the trying to get better stuff, that's just, that, that's just a waste. Well, it's a way to, and it goes back to kind of the, the, some of the things we were talking about earlier with golf and practicing and the boys where you talk about, hey, results are not going to come from practice. They're going to come from understanding the truth and obviously not living in that time with the Rembrandts and the Picasso, it would seem like an observation that they skewed more towards the truth than I'm going to get up and start painting so I can practice to get better at it. My honest answer to you with regard to that, uh, my truthful answer to you would be this. How they end up viewing things or not viewing things is not my call. And I'm not being good by giving, that's just the way it's mm -hmm. going to be. Right? Sure. They're going to view it the way they're going to view it. And I don't know. Just because I said something doesn't mean it's going to, happen. I'm not the sergeant and the general, you know, leading an army. And, you know, it, it, these are free human beings. They can do whatever they want, right? I can just say, like, my limit to where my boundary is my immediate space. I can only say with truth that I view things that way. And it's not good or bad. Like, I didn't choose to view things that way, right? I just do. Um, what someone else does, even though they grew up with me, I can't, I don't control that. So, yes, you're right. The influence, the influence may take root. The influence may not take root, right? I don't know. 